Hallelujah. The Lord has been good to you. You ought to touch that neighbor and say, he's been good to me. Hallelujah. Take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are just glad to be here. Glad to be in the presence of the Lord. Somebody wants to be here, but they couldn't be here. But I'm glad to be here. I know what it's like to be home and wish you could go to service and not be able to make it. But I'm glad to be here. And I walked in here. Did you? Hallelujah. I walk right on in here and I give God all the glory. We honor the Lord for the angel of this house. Amen. We honor the Lord for Bishop Wooden. We thank God for him and the work that he does. And we're just glad sometimes your body, your body will just shut you down for a little while when it needs some rest. And we thank God that God has given them this opportunity to recoup and we charge. And we thank God for our first lady. Oh, God, who has been there with him and been his nurse, his doctor, uh, his CNA. She's doing it all this week. And we thank God for her. And we ask that God give her strength. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands for our first lady. Amen. And to our district missionary, we thank God for her wonderful woman of God. We thank God for our first assistant, Elder John Amanchukwu. Amen. God bless you. Love you. We had a great day yesterday. So I have a little extra energy tonight. Amen. I'm excited. I thank God for my children. Um, I miss them tonight. I, somebody told me tonight, you look light, but I feel a little empty. I miss them tonight, um, but we will see them when we get home. Amen. And to all of you, the people of God, to the elders, to the ministers, to the missionaries, to the mothers, we thank God for you and we greet you tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank God for this praise team who just got us going in here tonight. It felt Real, 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 real good. It felt like the Lighthouse Church of God in Christ in Camden, North Carolina. To the Word of God, we thank God for our minister of music and our band. God bless you. To the Word of God, we're going to Exodus chapter 14. And we'll be reading a somewhat lengthy text. And that is not an indication that there will be a lengthy message. But the text is a little lengthy. That's how the Old Testament is. You got to get all the details so you can tell the whole story. Amen. Amen. Exodus 14, when you have it, say amen. And it reads thusly, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before Pihaharoth, between Migdal and the sea, over against Baal Ziphon, before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so, as the Lord said. Verse 5 says, And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people, and they said, Why have we done this, that we have let Israel go from serving us? And he made ready his chariots and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and the captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt and he pursued after the children of Israel and the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them. All of the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army and overtook them in camping by the sea beside Pihaharoth and Baal Ziphon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? And they said, is this not the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? 
For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, ye shall see them no more forever. For the Lord shall fight for you. And you shall hold your peace. But verse 15 says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But as for you, lift up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Our text tonight will be coming from verse 15, where God says to Moses, why are you crying out unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Our topic tonight is simply press forward. Press forward. Our text tonight is an account of God's deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt. I love to read this text in particular or the story of, of the children of Israel and Egypt because it is both inspirational and realistic in that it is a deliverance that does not take place instantaneously or immediately as some of the things that we see and are blessed by in the gospels. But their deliverance was a long process. Somebody say process. Uh, our text tonight is the culmination of a series of events when Moses and Aaron had to stand before Pharaoh and declare that God said that they were to let his people go. If you are to turn over to Exodus chapter 3, you will see where God initially uh, starts talking to Moses and gives him the assignment that he has for him. And it's a rather lengthy conversation, but it's very interesting because telling someone to go stand before the king and to tell him to let his free labor go, that is not an easy task, amen. And we thank God for our first lady tonight. That is not an easy task. So in Exodus chapter three, uh, verse seven, the Lord says to Moses, he said, surely I have seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. And he says, for I know their sorrow and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large land. Who wouldn't serve a God like ours? Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Unto the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, and the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. So what we get from this is, first of all, that God saw what they were dealing with. And it's important for us to know tonight, and no matter where you are in your life, that God is familiar with where you are and it's good to know that because even if he has not responded or done anything yet he still knows where you are and what you're dealing with and so then he goes on to tell him now therefore in verse 9 behold the cry of the children of Israel is coming to me and I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them and so Moses then responds to God and he says in verse 11 he says to God who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt now mind you the background of who Moses is not too long ago, Moses was on the run from a Pharaoh, another Pharaoh himself, because he had killed an Egyptian who had smitten a Levite. 
So now he, he hid out, he married, he went with the Hebrews, he married a, a, a daughter, he got married, and he lived in a different place. And then over time, he went back to Egypt. And it is, it is at this time that God takes this man and he calls him to speak to Pharaoh. But what is interesting when you read the text is that Moses is not nearly as concerned about speaking to Pharaoh as he is concerned about speaking to the children of Israel. In verse 12, he said, uh, in verse 11, he said, uh, how am I going to speak to Pharaoh? And then in 13, Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers shall set me unto you and they shall say, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? He's asking God, when I go to them, as far as they know, I'm an Egyptian. Because after all, Moses is the son of Pharaoh's daughter. So when I go to them and I tell them that your God said that I'm here to get you out of Egypt, he said, how are they going to believe me? And so God says, well, I tell you what, I'm going to give you some code language that only me and my people know. He said, God said unto him, tell them that I am that I am is his name. And he told them in verse 15, let them know that the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob hath sent me. Oh, I wish that we had this kind of spirit in the body of Christ today. I wish that it was so that people could say, I can't just go in that church and preach because they're going to want to know that I know God. But it's not like that today. I wish we lived in a time where people would would say I can't just make a CD and sing about Jesus because I'm a hip-hop artist and the people of God have too much discernment to go along with that I wish that the church was like that today but instead of us uh, checking people to make sure they know who God is we want to see how much money we can make we want to see how much publicity we can get we want to see if as anti advantageous for us but we've got to go back to being the kind of people who we want to know do you know God we have Facebook prophets that have thousands of followers and people will sit up under them and let them speak to them you ought to be trying to figure out do you know God Oh, God, you know psychology, but do you know God? You've made movies, but do you know God? You've made millions, but do you know God? And here we are in 2018, and I don't know about you, but our, my soul, our souls are too precious uh, to let any and everybody speak to us. We have to go back to checking those who want to speak to us and who want to use the name of the Lord. And so what God did is that he gave him access. He gave him his assignment, but he gave him access, and the access was his name. And as we go on down through the verses, uh, God gives him instructions and he tells him to speak to the elders, gather the elders and, and give them the report of what's going on. But something interesting comes out here in verse 19. In Exodus 3, verse 19, God is giving Moses instructions and he says to him, he says, and I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not with a mighty hand. And this is very interesting because uh, when you look at the world that we are in today, especially at the church world, we have church and we preach as if there is no Pharaoh that will not let us go. We have to know that Pharaoh is a type for the world and, and the children of Israel is a type for the church. And we have to know that even today, Pharaoh is still lurking and does not want to let the hearts and minds and souls of people go. In Exodus chapter 7 and verse 1, just quickly, God says to Moses, he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh, 
and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. And he said, he said, thou shalt speak all that I command, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh that he send the children of Israel out of the land. Now, if you go back to verse 1, that word, when he says, I have made thee a God, that word literally means, uh, it's a word, a, a Hebrew word that is Anna Ekome. Anna echo may and you hear in that word echo which is a voice but the beginning of it is Anna which means that I have made thee and ordained you to speak against Pharaoh and it's very interesting to know that God will ordain you to preach against sin and it's very important to know that because many of us today, a lot of our modern day preachers don't want to preach against anything. We say you don't have to preach against the darkness, just praise the light. We want to preach bubblegum sermons. We want to preach your best life now sermons. The only problem with that is that Pharaoh won't be moved by bubblegum sermons. Pharaoh is not moved by your best life now. Pharaoh will only let you go when God raises up a prophet who will speak against him. That is why I thank God for our man of God because God has raised him up as a man who is not afraid to speak against Pharaoh. And many times people come to service and they are thrown off. They hear him preaching against homosexuality and preaching against abortion and preaching against various things. But what we have to know is that God called Moses to preach against Pharaoh. He's not preaching against the slaves under Pharaoh's rule. When Bishop preached, he's not preaching against the people. He's preaching against Pharaoh. We have to remember that there is spiritual wickedness in high places that will only be brought down when somebody stands flat-footed and preaches under the anointing. And we have to preach with the understanding that sin is still out there, that sin is still in here, and that sin is still real. And if you know the story of Pharaoh, Moses and Aaron had to go to Pharaoh 13 times before he would let the people go. I'm here to let you know tonight you may be struggling. You may be having different things that you're struggling with. And you may say, I've already prayed and I'm still struggling. I've already fasted and I'm still struggling. I've already declared and decreed, but I'm still struggling. And I'm here to tell you that you keep praying, you keep fasting, you keep declaring and decreeing. And every time the enemy comes before you and tries to drag you in, to sin you stand before him again and said the God of the Bible said let me go and I'm not coming out and when he comes again God has made me free and I'm not going back whom the sun sets free is free indeed the enemy can rage he can war but he cannot bind whom God has freed he cannot curse whom God has blessed if there's anybody here who's free lift your hands and say I'm free and I'm not going back. I put that in the atmosphere for the future. I said I'm free and I'm never going back. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, I'm not there yet. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And so, and so, uh, 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 he had his assignment, and he had uh, his his authenticity because he had the the name of God, and God gave him his antagonist, who was Pharaoh. And no matter what you're doing. God will give you an assignment. He will give you uh, access and he doesn't have to give you an enemy because the enemy comes with the job. <laughs> Amen. And so as we go on, uh, let's go to uh, Exodus chapter four. We're moving quickly, moving quickly. But in Exodus chapter four, there's something that will bless us. God says to Moses and Moses answered and said, but behold, again, he's struggling with this thing. He said, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord has not appeared to you. They had some joy Behars way back then. And the Lord said unto him, what is in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. 
and he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent. And Moses fled from, from men, which is what I would do, scared of snakes. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and he caught it and it became a rod again. And, and this is what God did. Verse 5 says that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. God gave him signs. God gave him a rod to show his authenticity. And then he gave him another sign. He said, put your hands in your bosom. And he put his hands in his bosom, and when he brought his hand back out, it was leprous, and it was white, is what the Bible says. In verse 7, he said again, well, put your hand back in your bosom. And he, and he put his hands into his bosom again. And the Bible said, and he plucked it out. He was scared. He said, this is not going to work. He plucked it out of his bosom, and behold, it was turned again unto flesh. So he's in a, Moses is in a predicament where God is giving him something that people can see that will be the proof of his presence and his authenticity in his life. And even what happened today, where people, we are living in a time where if you say that God told you something, people will get on TV and claim that you are mentally ill. But it's funny because God has a way of authenticating the word that he has put in your mouth. And what God gave Moses was to use his rod. And I'm here to say to you, people of God, that you have to find your rod. And your rod represents that thing that is a representation of the glory of God or the power of God in your life. But it is something that people can see. Your rod represents your gifts, your talents, your ability, the anointing of God in your life. We are living in a day where even in the church, if you preach about certain things, people will not believe. And certainly the world will stand against. And a lot of the issues that even the world has with the church has nothing to do with, with uh, uh, their belief in God. But they don't want to receive Christianity because they don't want to receive the standard. They, don't, they, want to, they want to hear the gospel music. They want to invite the Tasha Cobbs on Good Morning America. But they don't want to hear uh, that lesbianism is wrong. They don't want to hear that a fornication and adultery is wrong. They don't want the standards. They want the feel good. They want the bump, but they don't want the standards. And what God is calling all of us to do is to find our rod so that every man that names the name of Christ, people can see that that person is truly connected to God. And the rod is not just something for us to use at church. It's so important to get that. But the rod is something that we use everywhere we go. God has given you a rod if you work in the med medical field. God has given you something where when you speak up, people know that you are really, there's something really to you. You want people to know among your family members that when you speak the oracles of God, that they can know. Now she's saying that there's something to it because you know she is really safe she can really get a prayer through God is wants to put something on all of us that signifies his power with us and then after you find your rod you have to stretch out your rod uh, if you have your rod, if you have your anointing, if you have your talent, but if you sit on it, it will do you no good. You have your word. You have your ability. You're a doctor. You're a graphics artist. You have whatever ability you have. If you sit on it, it will do you no good. But when you stretch out your rod. God will get in that thing even in the book of Exodus by itself when Moses stretched out his rod uh, the, his rod uh, Aaron's rod ate 
Pharaoh's rod, it, that both of the rods became snakes, and Aaron's rod ate Pharaoh's rod. Uh, when Moses' rod touched the ground, the dust became gnats. When Moses' rod touched the water, the water turned into blood. When Moses' rod was pointed toward the sky, uh, God released the hail. And on another time, God released the locust. And everybody knows that one time when Moses extended his rod and touched the rock, my God, some water came out of the rock. Come on, tell your neighbor, stretch out your rod. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, so going back to our text, to Exodus chapter 14, as I said before, Moses and Aaron went before Pharaoh 13 times and every time they went before him it went something like this uh, uh pharaoh we have come in the name of the lord and god said that you are to let his people go and 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 pharaoh said who are you whose name did you come in and he tells them again we come in the name of the lord and pharaoh decides that he's not going to do what god has said and when he doesn't do what god has said then god releases a plague and you know about the plagues the plagues of the water turning to blood the plague of the frogs which have been enough for me amen the plague of the lice the plague of the swarm of flies the plague of the death of cattle the plague of the boils the plague of the hail the plague of the locust the plague of three days of darkness the plague of the death of all the first boy males i'm telling you all of this because you have to know that pharaoh does not want to let you go and if pharaoh has to let everybody get boils to let you go he will he will allow that to happen but he will pull you in again this is why I get frustrated when I see gospel artists singing with Snoop Dogg. I have a heart for a, a, a young, a young people ministry and ministering to young adults. And I understand that many young adults struggle with hip hop music. I understand that for many of you, you're not going to listen to Snoop no way. But for some people, they just got saved and just turned that music off and they just got themselves together. And then they turn on one of 3.9 and you got somebody's voice and I just got out of that stuff you have to know that they are still struggling with Pharaoh uh, that's why it bothered me to see Tasha Cobb recording with Nicki Minaj I know all of us here we're not gonna dress a certain way we're not trying to be seductive we're not trying to be sexy but somebody else just got saved somebody else had to struggle not to wear that tight skirt somebody else had to struggle not to have their cleavage out and as soon as they get saved they get to see Nicki Minaj and Tasha Cobb together and I'm telling you that that Pharaoh will speak to your mind and Pharaoh will say that if Snoop Dogg can sell porn and be holy you can watch porn and be holy something will say to your mind that if Nicki Minaj can dress like a hoe and still be sanctified then you can do it too but people of God we We've got to stand on the wall, speak against Pharaoh, get in the ministry of Moses, and stand before the people in Pharaoh and say, In the name of Jesus, let his people go. My God, I'm getting excited. And so, in chapter 14, in chapter 14, here is what is happening real quick. At, they are at the end of all of that. So all of those visits, all of those plagues, all of those times of them going to Pharaoh have come and gone. So he finally released them and Pharaoh did not let them go until his firstborn son died. Isn't that something? When his son died, now you all could go. But after going through all that, they are faced with Pharaoh one more time. And the Bible gives them to know that, that God told Moses that Pharaoh is going to come after you again. 
And we know that the book of Exodus, uh, some of the, uh, the first five books of the Bible written by Moses are written in the causative tense. And so many times where it says that God will cause things to happen, uh, that, that is their mentality, that was their worldview. But it does not literally mean that God caused it, but that God allowed it. And so Moses, uh, uh, God told Moses in verse 4, I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he will follow after them. He told them, I want you to go and camp out at Pi-Haroth, and I want you to just wait right there and there's somebody in here you have stretched out on God you have made that first move and it seems like now you're just sitting and I want you to know that sometimes that's all God wants you to do him is get somewhere and camp out them because while you are camping out God is working the rest of the situation out to him somebody tell God thank you and he told him that I I'm going to let Pharaoh, when Pharaoh hears uh, that you are in the wilderness sitting still, uh, he is going to assume that you're in the wilderness afraid uh, and that you're in the wilderness lost. Uh, because remember, these are slaves. Uh, and just as we are the descendants of slaves, uh, and when we were emancipated in America, there were a lot of people who didn't think that we would make it on our own. Uh, but look at us in 2018 we're still free because God has made us free so Pharaoh thought that they were lost and confused and so the Bible says in verse 7 that he took 600 chariots the chariots of Egypt and all of his captains and all of them got together and went after the people of Israel now mind you in the first few verses God already told Moses and the children of Israel that this was going to happen he laid it out for them already so everything that's happening at this point is according to what God just said look at your neighbor and say God just said that so they're coming after them and so but then in verse 11 the people of Israel are afraid and they say to Moses did you bring us out here because they didn't have enough graves to bury us in the wilderness and now I just told you that God already told them what was going to happen and now that it's happening they are upset and afraid and they are coming against Moses and fussing against him and Moses goes on to tell them in verse 13 he says fear not stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show you today for the Egyptians whom you have seen today you shall see them again no more forever and he said the Lord shall fight for you and he said and for all that talking y'all were doing and you shall hold your peace you gotta be careful what you say when you're going through because your mouth can block your blessings your mouth can turn God against you your mouth can release the wrong spirit your mouth can frustrate your family your mouth can frustrate your job but tell your neighbor stand still and hold your peace and so then in verse 15 Mo the Lord says to Moses he said Moses why are you crying unto me in other words I just told you what was going to happen and everything that I said would happen is happening he said so why are you crying out to me and he said speak to the people of Israel that they should go forward and then he told he told Moses take your rod and stretch it over the sea and I will divide it for dry land I'm running out of time but basically what happened God would not perform the miracle of dry land until the people got up and pressed forward. I'm here to encourage 
with somebody tonight uh, that the next move is on you. Uh, God is saying you waiting on me, uh, but I'm waiting on you. Uh, what you going to do? Um, I already told you. Uh, you're the head and not the tail. Uh, I already told you. Uh, you're above and not beneath. Uh, I already told you. Uh, many are the afflictions uh, of the righteous, uh, but I will deliver you. Uh, out of them all. So God is saying when the enemy comes against you like a flood, I'm going to still lift up a standard against that enemy. And he said tonight that whatever I've told you, keep going with the plan. Keep going with my purpose. If you're sick in your body, keep going. If you have a project but you don't have the money that you thought you would have, God sent me to tell you, keep going. If people come, keep going. If people go, God said keep going. God said that Pharaoh is behind you. Now is not the time for you to sit still and act like uh, you don't know what's going on uh, but you've got to get up uh, and move forward uh, in my plan uh, you've got to get up uh, and move forward uh, you've got to press um, toward the mark uh, of the prize uh, of the high calling in God uh, somebody say press for it hey press for it Press forward, I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. If you want that, shout glory. Let me say this. And I'm gonna take my seat. I don't claim to be a sports professional or a sports, what do you call it? Uh, 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 I don't know, enthusiast. But in basketball, I know that they have half court press and I know that they have full court press. And when they do the half court press, that is when the defense does not press on the offensive players, but so hard. They let them come to the middle line and then they put on the press. But the full court press is for that fourth quarter when the score is tight and they don't want you to get any points. As soon as you get the ball and you're standing on the side, they're standing in front of you like this. They don't want you to take an inch. Well, I'm here to tell you in the year 2018, in the year of the pressers, it's time for you to put on the full court press. You've been half praying long enough. You've been half fasting long enough. You've been halfway coming to church long enough. But now it's time for the full court press. You ought to pray. Don't just pray when something's going on. You ought to buke and bind the devil on every hand. As soon as you wake up, you ought to be praying on your job. Praying over your children. Satan, you can't have my mind. Satan, you can't have my body. You can't have my car. You can't have my phone. You can't have my living room. You can't have what's under my bed. You can't have my pinky toe because I belong to God. Somebody in here, you ought to feel a prosper in your spirit. I feel a prosper to pray as never before. I feel a prosper to seek the Lord as never before. If you feel like me, I'm telling you to lift your hands and give God a full court press praise, a full court praise. Cover every area of your home. This praise is for my kids, my marriage, my money, my 401k, my future. Give him praise. 
hand out here. Hey! Four chord prayers. Four chord prayers. I won't let the enemy have an inch. I don't want the enemy to be in my TV shows. I know you're not a homosexual. You may not struggle with that. But when you're in the full court press, I won't even watch it on television. When you're in the full court press, I know I'm not adulterer, but I don't want that stuff in my TV. I don't want it in my spirit. I don't want it in my atmosphere because I'm pressing toward the mark. Does anybody feel like me? Somebody lift your hands and say, God, I'm pressing. God, I just want you. God, I just want you. This is not for everybody, but this is for the ones who really, 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 really want God. Who really, 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 really want God. Lift your hands and say, God, I'm leaving my past behind. I'm leaving my flesh behind. I cast my crowns at your feet and I follow you wherever you go. Come on, give them glory. Hallelujah. Every hand lifted in this house. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As we press forward, God is saying, take the next step. It's on you. Fill out the resume. Send it out. Fill out the application. Don't use your cell phone just for crazy stuff. Call the right person. Send the right text message. One email, one phone call can change your life. I know I'm right about it. Introduce yourself. Come on, we're still praying to the right people. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the next steps. I'm talking about stepping forward, finishing your demo, saving your money, cleaning up your credit, coming to prayer meeting, coming to Sunday school, coming and saying, Pastor, whatever you need me to do, I'm here. I'm taking the next step forward. Oh, if you're ready for that, lift your hands. Oh, God, in Jesus' name. God, we take you at your word and we move forward. God, we believe you and we trust you. God, we want you to get the glory out of our lives. God, that is our only purpose. God, we don't want another move, oh God, to bring glory to ourselves. But God, we pray that in this hour we can be used to be the representation of Jesus in the world. God, we'll be your rod. You may use us as you wish. In Jesus' name we pray. Clap your hands for Jesus and give God the praise. <laughs>